Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Matheus and I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat. Nice to meet you all. This is Pythonic Functional Programming List Comprehensions. Unfortunately, time is of the essence, so I won't have time for questions, but feel free to meet me afterwards and I'll be glad to address them. So, let's get started. Um, more often than not, we need to deal with collections, list of objects, overall iterables while coding, and most times we can get by with a simple for loop, which in Python is a elegant for each loop. Uh, performing one action per iteration. And we also know that Python is a multi-paradigm uh, programming language, which supports several different structures for this coding pattern of performing one action per collection element. So let's check some of those structures in action and compare them to check how they look like and maybe which one is the best. So we can start with a, with a simple example of computing the squares of all integers from 0 to a large number. So let's assume that we're going to have an iterative approach first. So let's define our main function. So let's see uh, that we want a list of squares that's going to start empty and then for x, because we're doing math here, in a range that goes from 0 to 10 to... Come again? Oh, font size, sorry, my bad. Is this better? Thanks. Um, so, for x in range from 0 to 10 to the 8th, let's add its square to the list. So, squares dot append x times x. So far so good, nothing too fancy. This is like CS101 code, so we are going to return squares and we should be good. Does it look bug to me? Does it look bug to you? Do know, let's check. So if name equals main, because Python thinks it's a good idea somehow. Um, result equals main, so let's grab the whole squares list, but we don't want to go through like, this is almost, this is a hundred million numbers, we don't want to check off them, let's just check the last one. So let's print result, the last one, result of minus one. And let's see what happens when we run this. Let's actually go into the, the folder, Python, iter. So it should take a little bit to run, it's a big number, but eventually it will return an even larger number because this is 10 to the 80 minus 1, so yeah, that, that looks good to me. It worked. So far, so good. But for loops are boring. Maybe there's a more functional way to do this. So we can leverage a map here. So map is a high order function that takes two other, uh, that takes another function and a collection as arguments, applies that function over that collection and returns that collection modified with the function on each of its arguments. So let's do that. Let's try to get fancy. So let's copy this. And let's call it map. So instead of going through a for loop, we're going to do this. Return. As range isn't really a list, but uh, a generator, let's cast it to a list. So let's return a list of a map. So let's pass an anonymous function, lambda x, x times x over the original range of 0 to 10 to the 8. And this is already looking very lispy. Might be, might be doing something right here. Looks very functional. So let's save it. Let's run it. And if I didn't mess up, the results should be the same. So I really hope I didn't screw this up. 
so it also takes a little bit to, to run, but fortunately it will turn out well. Yes, it did. So this is a more functional approach, a very lispy approach. Um, but this isn't Python. We want to call it Python. We are, we are, we're not, I'm not a, a Lisp developer. I'm a Python developer. I want to do this on a more Pythonic way. And there is a more Pythonic way to do this. Can anyone, anybody tell me which one it is? Can you guess it maybe by the, the talk's title, maybe? <laughs> so there's a list comprehension way. So list comp. And to be completely honest, it looks very good. Because what we're going to do is, we're going to declare a list with open and close brackets. And we're going to do x times x for x in range. Looks a lot better. At least for me, it looks a lot better, a lot cleaner. Much fewer characters. Let's see if it still yields the same result as it showed. I think it's gonna, it's gonna yield the same result. But probably you guys might be thinking the same thing as, the same thing as myself. Which one's faster? Why have this if in the Python Zen there should be an obvious way of doing something? So let's check that. Let's create a benchmark script and compare them. So for script in UI, do let's show the script name. So echo script, script, Python 3, actually time, Python 3, script. And let's break the line at the end. I think it's like this. Uh, done. So, And let's run it. And let's compare. Who thinks the for loop is going to be faster? Raise your hands. Nobody, okay. Who thinks the map approach is going to be faster? Oh, you guys check the, the Git repository. You're cheating. Who thinks the list comprehension approach will be faster? Oh, that's nice. Okay, so the iterative approach took 12 seconds and change. Least comprehension took 10 seconds, so it's already faster than the for loop. So maybe map is faster, or maybe it isn't. Let's find out. So map is actually the slowest one. So OK, we already know that least comprehensions are faster for this um, particular use case. But there are other use, use cases that we can have, because map is one specific function. But we have other, that is the filter. Who knows what a filter is? Nice, so many functional programming people, you make me proud. So if this, you are applying a filter effect with a for loop, we can say that, okay, now we only want the squares of, let's say, even numbers. So if x mod 2 equals 0, we then append it to the squares list. But this is naive, this works. How do we implement this in a, let's say, pure functional way, a lispy way? We would apply a filter over the range here. And filter is another high order function that takes another function, applies it over an iterable, and if the result of that function is true, it preserves that value there in the collection, but if it's false, it removes it. So we're going to pass yet another anonymous function and apply it over the range. But this is becoming even less readable, right? And now we have four parentheses at the end of 
of this statement. This doesn't look like Python at all. So how do we do this with a list comprehension? Can anyone tell me? <coughs> you guys make me proud. It's, it's, you're making my day here. So return x for x in range if x mod 2 equals 0. Much more readable, much more elegant uh, sy syntax. But is it still the fastest one? Maybe the iterative approach might be faster because it might benefit for some um, branch prediction. What do you guys think? Let's run it. Again, who thinks the iterative approach will be faster? Nobody. And the map approach? Nobody. So I, I'm assuming everyone thinks the branch approach will be faster. So iterative approach is 11.5 seconds. It's OK. Let's see the least comprehension approach, 8.7 seconds, so still faster. So I think by now you should be thinking, I should always use least comprehensions because it's faster. And I think you, it won't be a far-fetched takeaway, but least comprehensions don't really stop there. Let's say you have a list of lists, which is something like this. And you want to linearize it. In other words, you want to make it a single list of scalars. You can do that with list comprehension. So um, scalar list becomes x for y in list of lists for x in y. So if we print scalar list, there it is, linearized. And you might be thinking, what if a list of lists of lists, and so on? You can have as many four elements in iterable, four elements in iterable statements as you want, as you need for achieve whatever you need to do. But it doesn't stop there. What if you want to filter out just the lists that have more than one element, for example? You can do that. So let's say that I want a scalar list uh, big, meaning that I only want x for y in list of lists for x in y if len of y is greater than 1. In other words, I don't want single elements lists to be considered. Will that work? Yes, it will. You can see that the six, 6 is missing from here because we excluded this element here from the list comprehension. So uh, this is a tiny bit of why these comprehensions are great. And the main takeaways, guys, really is that they look good. They are cool to write. But that's not really what matters here, even though that's pretty awesome. What matters is that they have excellent performance. And begin writing these comprehensions in your Python code, guys. It won't hurt you. And even take a step further, Python even has dictionary comprehensions, but this is probably a topic for another talk. And whenever you need to iterate over something, apply a single action at a time, Remember that least comprehensions exist. Um, all this talks code, examples, and much more in-depth information you can check in this GitHub repository here. So please check it out. Um, the link to it is also on this talks page in the schedule app. And thank you very much.